Well, welcome back. And you find me here at my normal haunt at the start of an adventure outside the town hall at the northbound bus stop heading towards Bristol. Because today we've got something to look into. That is namely Romeos and Beasts. So, the Romeos and the Beast, what's that about then? Well, I can tell you the Romeos involve going to Bristol, whereas the Beast involves going to Cardiff. So we're going to have a busy day in front of us today. So, how do Romeos fit into all this? Well, that's a good question. Best if you know what Romeos are, I guess. And over to Jeff to find out more about that. I'll be back in a minute. Hello everyone, it's Jeff again, and I'm here today to tell you a short story about a very interesting style of shoes called Romeos. For those of you who have been watching my videos for a while, you know that my parents were complete gypsies and I went to 13 schools in 12 years. One year I went to three different schools the same year. I primarily grew up on the North Oregon coast though. And that is what the story that I'm about to tell you right now is about. All of the loggers on the North Oregon coast when I was growing up all wore handmade boots and they were called corks. And it was a requirement. And the individual shops and little restaurants in town would have an itty bitty sign at the door that would say no corked boots. And it meant that you weren't allowed to come in if you were wearing these uh, style of spiky boots. There was some very prestigious companies in Oregon and Washington making handmade boots. These are Drews, which are made in Klamath Falls. And this particular pair was handmade out of elk skin. Some hunter probably custom ordered them. But there was also Whites, which was made in Spokane, Washington. And that's primarily what the people in the area where I lived wore. These boots cost hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And oftentimes, if you custom ordered a pair for only a little more, they would make you a pair of shoes to wear when you weren't working. And they were affectionately called Romeos. Romeos were often made from the scraps from boot making and sometimes they were included in the price if you ordered a particularly expensive pair of custom made boots. The kids that I went to school with, if their fathers took their boots in for major repairs and it happened to be around the time that school started, they might pop a few dollars and get a pair for the kid. It is largely what we wore to school was Romeos. Logging as I knew it when I was a kid is a thing of the past. Men do not work in the woods like they used to. It is all equipment and therefore the demand for handmade logging boots and Romeos is nearly gone. I haven't quite got my head around the fact that I'm nearly 61 years old next month and the era of the bus running around town picking up the loggers, which incidentally, the bus was affectionately known as a crummy. Those days are over. And although the era of old time logging is over, there is still one company that makes Romeo's left. And that is the Georgia Boot Company. And it is a pair of those that Gabriel is taking today to Bristol. And I contend to you that if you have a job where you have to wear shoes, there is no shoes on the planet more comfortable than a pair of Romeos. I thankfully am afflicted with no such job.
And this, ladies and gentlemen, is my beloved pair of Romeos. Let's go and get them looked at. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've left my shoes right there in the shop. Now it's time to head to Cardiff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves once again here at uh, Bristol Temple Mead Station on the next stage of our journey to meet the beast. And there we are, there's our train on platform seven to Cardiff Central. Let's go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the tunnel, the Seven Tunnel. And here's some interesting factoids about the Seven Tunnel. It was built in 1873, between 1873 and 1886. It is actually 4.35 miles long, although only 2.25 miles of it is actually under the water. It was the largest, longest underwater tunnel in the world until 1987. It was surpassed later on by the uh, Channel Tunnel. And here's the really interesting fact that you might not want to think about while you're down here. Every day, every single day, 50 million gallons of the River Severn find their way into this tunnel. 50 million gallons. They've got two huge engines pumping it out. Um, they used to be steam engines, now I believe they're electrical. So you always breathe a bit of a sigh of relief when you come out into daylight at the other end, just to know that you're not going to get a swim with the fishes. So that's the Severn Railway Tunnel. And we're out the other side, so no more risk of drowning today. And there is the trusty steed that brought us here. So onwards into Cardiff and the beast. And here we are in Cardiff, ladies and gentlemen. Esta Rive, as they say in Rotherham. Let's go that way. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, we've done it. That is a hoagie. It's called the White House and I think it's pretty much got the works on it and we have now fulfilled the task that we were set those weeks ago when we went to London we have now fulfilled that task and I'm going to eat this right now ladies and gentlemen I actually don't know some of what I'm eating here but what I do know is it's absolutely delicious why have I never had a hoagie before? Why? I mean, man, I've been missing out. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's quite funny, actually, because, as I say, this isn't a beast. This is a White House. They actually didn't have enough stuff in the shop to make a White House. My appetite was bigger than the shop. How about that? <laughs> That's going some, but we're eating our way through. So, ladies and gentlemen, we can consider the hoagie challenge concluded. So, we've had the hoagies, we've met the challenge, we've had the hoagies. We've now crossed the border. We're in Canada. We're in Tim Hortons, the home of maple donuts and vanilla coffee. So I'm having some maple donuts and vanilla coffee. And I've got Jeff on the phone, hot from America, trying to persuade me not to buy more junk food. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to listen to him, but it's not getting me anywhere. So I've bought some more junk food. I tell you what, these donuts, if you've not had a maple donut out of Tim Hortons, give yourself a favour, put your coat on, get in the car, drive to your nearest Tim Hortons now and order one of these. They are awesome. Mm. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves back here 
at Cardiff Central Station. What a trip. We came down. We tried to take on the beast, but the beast, it appears, wasn't ready to take us on. And they couldn't prepare one. They actually didn't have enough stuff in the shop to make me a beast. I don't know. All this bravado saying, come and try the beast. And when you get there, the beast runs away and hides. I don't know. Anyway, we had the uh, White House, which was a delicious sandwich. So I can now say I've had a hoagie. Uh, as Jeff would say, you're no longer a hoagie virgin, which is a good thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if I can get an earlier train back to Brizzle from here in Cardiff, because then I can go and pick my shoes up, which I really, really miss. I've not worn them for two days now, and I'm really missing them. So I'm going to go and hop on an earlier train, and I'll see you back in Bristol. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, we are now back in Bristol, and this is the part of the day I've been looking forward to getting my Romeos back. Let's see what's happening. Well, ladies and gentlemen, all is well in the world, look. Ha ha! I've got my Romeos back. Oh, they're so comfortable. They're so comfortable. These will be on my feet till I get to bed tonight. They're absolute, I never take them off. They're absolutely fantastic. If you haven't got a pair of Romeos yet, I suggest you uh, you look into getting a pair because there's no going back. There really is no going back. So I'm off to find me the bus back to Glastonbury. Too much excitement for one day. All that wonderful American food and getting my shoes back. I'm a happy bunny. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, just a day in the life really of stuff I get up to when I'm not making films. Um, but that was the end of the day, so I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.